Keeping bringing you a new video of where and how I keep my fish. If you've ever experienced having a freshwater planted tank, you probably know that it's very tricky to keep aquatic plants alive in a normal aquarium setup. Most store bought fish tanks will fail after some time, and that's because unwanted changes in water parameters such as changes in pH or nitrite levels can easily destroy your fish and plants. Now, what I want to show you guys today is an aquarium that automatically maintains its own water quality and there is no need for sophisticated filters which I'll get to in a bit. Okay. I've had these tanks running for two years. The plants been doing well without any fertilizers or special care. I have a variety of aqua plants in there which were small in the beginning but as you can see now they have fully covered this whole tank. The fish are also doing great swimming around eating well and let me actually feed them so you guys get an image of how they look while eating. Moving to the other tank. The orange fish with black triangles are a school of Harley Quinn Rasboras picking out food and this is a blue rainbow fish which is my favorite. Anyways I'll say the names of all my fish and plants at the end of the video so keep on watching. Now I want to mention that besides having lively plants, in fact my fish keeping fatality for the past 6 months has been zero. These are indications of having incredibly healthy water when in reality I only do a fraction of water changes compared to what is required to keep fish happy in a conventional aquarium. So what makes this setup different to a conventional aquarium is that here I am using the science of an ancient farming method called aquaponics to naturally purify the water and minimize my required water changes. Today, I'm going to show you a simple method to stabilize and maintain your water quality in order to support life and to provide an ideal condition for your fish and plants to grow. So let's start by showing you how the water gets cycled in this setup. These two tanks are connected to each other via a water bridge that my clown loaches love swimming through, going from one tank to another. The water flows from here to the first tank, it goes through the bridge to the second tank where I keep more fish. So far everything is normal, anyone could make a water bridge. What makes my setup different is that before the water gets cycled back to the first tank, it must pass through this container on top which we call a grow bed in an aquaponics setup because this is where the plants are growing out from and it's the most important part of our system. You might underestimate the purpose of these plants but I'll tell you exactly what they do. See, the fish eats food, then the fish poops. The poop is toxic to the fish and to the aqua plants because it builds up ammonia and nitrite levels in the water which is the most common reason for fish fatality in a normal aquarium. That's why you must do water changes every week to keep your fish alive. But it's a totally different story in my setup because it's designed to provide the ecological balance needed to keep the water healthy and pure. These plants are alive. Their green color shows that they're constantly photosynthesizing under daylight so they're gonna need nutrition to maintain health and grow. As the plants are in a closed system with the fish in this setup, the water flowing here is the only source of nutrition for them. Therefore, their roots are going to absorb and filter all the organic impurities out of the aquarium and purify the water. Using this method, 
we can perfectly benefit from the natural process of the ecological relation between plants and aquatic animals. The plants use the highly nutritional decomposed fish waste to grow, therefore they purify the water. Of course, this process could not have been possible without the help of these clay pebbles in the grow bed. Clay is very porous material that allows microscopic beneficial bacteria to house in. These naturally occurring good bacteria are the agents that convert the toxic fish waste to plant food, also known as nitrate, that is the main source of food for plants and could easily be picked up by the roots. These ordinary materials are also known as biofilter because they maintain the natural chemistry cycle of an aquatic habitat. And the other benefit of these pebbles is that they provide a soil-like texture for the roots to hold on to. Another thing I have here is a sponge to mechanically filter the solids out of the water. Now that you've learned the basics, you could apply this method to a fish tank of any size. Just connect the grow bed to your aquarium and turn it into a sustainable aquaponic system. To have a successfully running aquaponic system, make sure you have proportional amount of plants to the number of fish you keep. So maybe you could start with a few fish first until your plants get bigger and are able to remove a higher bio load, then you can add more fish, as simple as that. About the grow bed, I wanted to say that you don't have to be very selective. In my case, I've used the top filter as the grow bed, but you could basically use any container. For example, a plastic pot and fill it up with a substrate material of your choice. This is my second aquaponic setup that I've placed in my balcony. The plants are thriving and my baby giant Gouromi is growing fast in there. Check out the link below if you want to see more of him. Anyways, this tank is just a complete ecosystem that also enables my bird to have access to clean water all the time. She's been living here since she was 3 months old and I have explained more about her drinking from this water in my other video. You may find the link in the description. Now back to the grow bed, most people grow edible plants in aquaponics because the system provides a suitable condition to produce great organic products. The reason why I've chosen this money plant is because A. It's a strong plant B. I didn't want to plant something that I need to spend time into harvesting later and C. is because I just wanted to plant something that could keep on growing and cover my building to give it a jungle vibe. <laughs> the other plant growing from the bed is a type of vine that could absorb high amounts of nitrates, similar to money plant. Now it's time to break it down. Aquaponics were actually invented to grow fish and plants sustainably as an efficient source of food for humans. There are now lots of people that do it in big scales because it gives them great profit, which I'll explain in a minute. Though aquaponics has been around since the ancient times, in today's world it's been rediscovered by deriving two types of modern farming methods called hydroponics and aquaculture. Hydroponics is growing plants in water. Aquaculture means farming fish or other aquatic organisms in a controlled environment. They both are designed for a fast and efficient method of producing plants and fish separately. These systems are great and are 90% more efficient than conventional farming, but they still have their individual cons. For example, in hydroponics you would have to add heaps of organic or non-organic supplements to the water because the plants rely on an outside source of nutrition to grow, as water by itself does not have any nutritional value. And the con in aquaculture is that the waste from the fish is toxic to the fish itself, just like how I explained earlier. So to keep them alive, they would have to do massive water changes as well as using sophisticated filters to maintain water quality, 
which would increase the cost. Now, combining these two, hydroponic and aquaculture, you can come up with a system that has the advantages of both and at the same time cancels out their individual disadvantages. Isn't that awesome? This combined system is called aquaponics. The aquaponic farming technique conserves our underground water reservoirs, lakes, rivers, and dams, as it uses 90% less water than traditional farming. Since aquaponics recycles the water in the system, it could even work in droughts and areas with water shortage. This is the future, guys. Unlike in traditional farming, where the ground sucks up millions of liters of unrecyclable water, aquaponics saves water through recycling and preserves land as it could grow much more plants per square foot than traditional farming. With some preparations, you could be growing any time of year in any weather anywhere on the planet. Plants grow twice as fast due to the naturally fortified water from the fish. And for those of you with an entrepreneur mindset, the good news is that the commercial aquaponics farmer can produce two streams of income, fish and veggies, rather than just one. Edible fish are grown in a tank. Their poop enriches the water with nutrition. This enriched water is pumped into grow beds with edible plants rooted in them. As the water flows through the grow bed, the plant's roots and the bacteria that grows on the gravel take nutrition from the water. This both nourishes the plants and cleans the water. The water now clean flows back into the fish tank. It works exactly the same as my tank. The only difference is that this is small scale and what you see are the real scale aquaponic farming systems. Now, I want to take you to thousands of years ago. There are records that this sustainable source of food had been used by advanced civilizations of ancient times, such as number one, the Chinese empire that's now the world's most populous nation. Number two is the Aztec Empire civilization that flourished by harnessing the natural strength of the river ecosystem and provided it open strategic places to grow fish and plants. Number three is one of the seven world wonders, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon that was built 3000 years ago. They were described as a remarkable work of engineering with an ascending series of gardens containing a wide variety of trees, shrubs, and vines. There are no physical evidence of these gardens left today, but Herodotus, who was a Greek historian, visited the Hanging Gardens 450 before Christ and reported that the gardens were built on different levels, open walls 20 feet thick with a depth of soil and gravel on top. What does that sound like, guys? Doesn't it just sound like a massive built-in aquaponic system? Did we just solve one of the world's biggest wonders? I guess so. Damn! Now that you know how amazing aquaponics is, the final thing I wanted to point out is that this whole system directly benefits me as well. I usually have my air conditioning on blast but let's say during the day if I have my doors windows shut and my air conditioning off I still get a great supply of fresh air in the room thanks to these plants because as I exhale carbon dioxide they absorb some and produce oxygen in return is that right come here uh, you kissing me or what okay <laughs> According to Canada's National Environmental Agency, two mature trees can provide enough oxygen for a family of four. Anyways guys, that's it for today. I hope I motivated you to connect and be more loving towards nature. Go plant a tree today or simply make your own aquaponic system. It's very easy. Subscribe and stick around because I'm going to upload more interesting stuff on this channel. Do turn on the notifications as well so you don't miss out. I might do a 
surprise live video of aquascaping a new fish tank where I will use your comments to design. Now, as I promised, I'm gonna leave you with the names of the plants and fish. Hope you enjoyed the video. Ciao and see you soon. So as I said earlier, this is a school of Harley Quinn Rasboras. This one is the blue rainbow fish. Okay. This is a pair of black phantom tetras. And these two are called Rominos tetras. They are a pair as well. If you look closely, one of them has a red face, which is a male, and the one with no color face is the female. So here I completed all the fish in this tank. The only last one remaining is a glass fish that's usually hiding beside the water pump. Sorry, I meant air stowed. Um, I just turn it off so it doesn't sound too loud in the video. I'm moving here. This is a spotted zebra fish. Yeah. That. I'll check the name and tell you guys. It's one of the smallest freshwater fish. That is a full grown one so yeah this is the pair I was telling you guys the spotted zebra fish these two fish are called coolie loach they are eel like freshwater fish that spend their time mostly hiding during the day there is a lot of plants in this tank that provide shelter for them so I don't even see them that often to be honest they only come out at night to find some food and prefer to spend their time under a lot of plants hiding under a lot of plants I bought them two years ago and I only see them like once a month if I'm very lucky so probably you guys are the charm here now what's remaining is this two fish called tetra and these two are called red eye tetras four of these tetras together include the tetra gang in my tank so it's at night here and my clown loaches are sleeping oh i just saw one of them going through the water bridge so hopefully he's gonna come out of down there oh you see his nose sticking out yay he came out there are three of them but since it's the night here they are actually sleeping and I'm gonna show you guys where they sleep because it's really interesting they sleep in the body of this driftwood that I've placed here so if you look closely you can actually see the clown loach's fin, let's say there is one here, right? And you can see this one sleeping right here in the middle of a driftwood. And another one sleeping here. <laughs> it's so funny. Anyways, that's their picture. You could follow my fish hobby on Instagram at my aquariums where I have photographed and posted all different fish I've had in different times due to different reasons. These two are called Emperor Tetras. They have a majestic look and they are actually a pair. The male has blue eyes, it's the one at the back that has a crown like tail. 
and the female has green eyes with normal tail you can see they are easily distinguishable and lastly this is called a flying fox that's swimming away from the camera about the plants that I keep they are all relatively easy and suitable for beginners so I'm gonna put their name after this clip for any of you guys who are interested please don't forget to like and share the video with your friends see you all next time